Systematics of particle production in uh, color glass condensate. If I just take this color glass condensate for granted, and I will use this dilute dense uh, regime and would see what it would imply for particle production, say in neutron gold collisions. But I'm afraid I will not get there. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to hear, that, 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 so if you want to hear that, it's probably will be in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, so this is the plan. So I will start with what is a model. And uh, uh, anisotropy and what its uh, origin in CGC, so I will show it uh, explicitly, okay? And if I have time, and you will not, then I will also discuss high multiplicity PA collisions, and this is what is called, uh, what is used to be called, okay, uh, by Larry, is a glittering plasma. And if I would take this uh, thing and uh, now generalize it to the load dense uh, regime, and I would ask myself, what are those high multiplicity uh, events in, uh, for example, deuteron gold collisions. So, what I would learn there uh, in terms of the configurations of the deuteron wave function, and then uh, by by doing this, also I would I can ask what would be the effect of the projectile geometry on the smooth on this other day and this color bus condensate, and maybe I will be able to relate the multiplicity to the projectile uh, uh, geometry, and I can so. So moving forward, so of course uh, our goal is to study the two-particle correlation, in particular to study what is called uh, the ridge, the uh, correlation power of many uh, rapidity units shown over here. And specifically, we are interested in the isomuthal uh, anisotropy uh, here. Okay, so this is uh, uh, our subject of study. It's a two-particle correlation function, and. Uh, there were um, previous theoretical result, uh, results, for example, in the forward region when uh, people computed the asymmetric anisotropy uh, by, uh, by uh, looking at the quark scattering of the uh, dense target. And in this case, the odd part of this asymmetric anisotropy just comes from the fact that there is a, a charge asymmetry between uh, quarks and anti quarks, and there is a natural asymmetric anisotropy that originates from this fact. So, this talk is not about this. Okay? So, I will deal only with gluons here. Uh, so I will consider the central region, and if you uh, take the central region and you will try to compute the autosimutal anisotropy in strict dilute dense approximation, you'll get zero, not okay. But but uh, but on the other case, uh, if you would consider uh, a dense dense calculation, and in dense 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 calculation, it will show numerical. This is this is a leading model, right? Leading water in uh, uh, in alpha. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. So I will. I will be. Uh, uh, it's leading water in alpha s and in diluteness as well. So uh, of course. Uh, so uh, if in principle, uh, I will be only talking about the plus problems. Of course, in a very dense. You only have one core approach. Then then you go over here. Okay, so if you break uh, the symmetry between quarks and anti quarks, so you don't have to go forward. You can reduce your two particles of, uh, elsewhere out of your evolution. And uh, I bet they would have also. Yeah, and once you have tangent like kinematic, of course, the one that I will be. Like everything you just discussed yeah. there. Yeah. Right? When we're producing two sure, particles. I'm not talking about this. I am interested in long range, of course, and eventually, right? No. no, no, that's also one. So what, 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 what exactly are you talking about? Like what I was addressing, sorry, and what Alfie is talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, but you see, I mean, he's uh, died out. Uh, after he's died out. 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 He's died Okay, so in numerical dense dance, uh, which was uh, first done uh, by Thomas uh, Roger and uh, I do not know Sredniak's name, uh, Stanislav Stas. Thank you very much. I should probably know. 
Okay, so, and by stars. So they show that there is a, a non-trivial potency in what's called isotropy in dense dense in dense dense calculation. So what happen, happens in between? So we know that uh, in uh, in analytical results, so we get zero in the dense, but in numerical dense dense calculation, we have this uh, non-zero azimuthal old azimuthal isotropy. So what happens in between is what uh, I'm going to tell you about. Okay, so and uh, I will base the, uh, this uh, uh, talk on the this dilute dense expansion, um, where I will consider that I have one uh, very dense target, uh, which is denoted sometimes by QSA or by QS uh, sub T, and I will have a projectile uh, which is uh, uh, which is a, a dilute object, and what I am interested in the particle production are between these two scales. Okay, and uh, in this case, in general, as I said. Uh, if I just take the color glass condensate picture and I will try to, uh, to describe the particle production, it will be given by some function over here, which is the function of uh, the ratio of the scales. It's uh, the, uh, the, pro uh, the, the projectile uh, QS over the momentum and the uh, uh, target uh, QS over the momentum. Okay, and in general, it is only non numeric. So you can do this on the lattice uh, by solving classical Lagrange equations. For a very large k pair, much larger than uh, the largest uh, saturation momentum, uh, you can uh, do calculations analytically and get a very uh, uh, simple result. So now, uh, if you want uh, to account multiple rescattering uh, in the uh, largest, uh, uh, in the densest uh, object here, or in this case, it's target, uh, so you can do the expansion uh, of this function into a power series with respect to the ratio of the QS of the projectile divided by uh, the momentum of the uh, outcoming balloon. So you'll get this expansion. I'm not saying this expansion diver, uh, converges. I do not know. Okay? But this is an expansion. So uh, to check the convergence properties, of course, one has to extract uh, multiple orders and then look at this expansion. So I do not know. Sorry, what do you mean by convergence? This expansion. Uh, so what we know, for instance, if you take your F1, uh -huh. and start, so F1 is not in fact, right? If you expand it in the powers of QS squared over the curve squared, you get the divergent series with zero right as a conversion. Mm -hmm. So I think it's highly likely the whole thing has a zero right as a conversion. If your series is really m factorial times the power, and it's not sign alternating, so it's not an imperial sum of all. So which means that, uh, uh, so which means that we expand in your, around the wrong uh, well, around dilute. Well, yeah. dilute. I don't know. What? It, it might still be an asymptotic series. It's an asymptotic series. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we have the, we know F1. You and I found it, right? Uh, some form of the zone case for like, uh, have an analytic form, so that, that's fine. But just I wouldn't be comfortable with the series properties so much right. because of the function. Um, I'm talking expansion in the project now, right? So then I have the project. Right. For that one, of course, we don't have the function. So. Okay, so uh, I, I, what I'm just saying that this series, so this series, not F1, but this series, uh, so the property of this series, but it's still an asymptotic series, I, I, I would I would well if you take F1, F2, and all Fs to the leading order in the QS of the target, then you'll get, you know, it's like you swap out the interchange target and projectile in that series with the again the non series with the convergent series. So, but so, you want to so who, who cares? Oh, just <laughs> <a second>. <laughs> <laughs> who, who cares uh, if the music was <laughs> both computed yeah, by you? Who cares if the series is convergent or not? Then. No, so we deal with, do we ever deal with convergent series? <laughs> 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 it's the last one. This is so. I do it as three part of project. Which one? The last one. Yeah. So this one? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. One second. I haven't yet computed anything yet. I'm just showing you that you, you can do it. Uh, you, you can write it like this. I, I haven't yet said. I didn't <laughs> say what what F two is. Okay. And I will not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said that you can expand this. Okay. So in principle, these functions are theoretically computable. In principle, in practice, it's of course uh, complicated. So um, and of course, uh, what, going back to your uh, point, so what is known analytically here, F1. So the first term is known analytically since '98, 
Quill and uh, Alan Hury, who uh, was one of the first who actually computed this one. Uh, so uh, now if you go to the next, uh, uh, next correction, the first saturation correction, let's call it the project tab. So this is the first saturation correction in the project tab. Uh, so uh, which uh, one of the representative graph is, for example, like this. So there is no complete result yet even uh, uh, for, this, uh, uh, for, for this first correction. Okay. There are two complete results. <laughs> 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 no, they're not complete in the sense that we're, we're no, it's two, it is two, not three. three. No, this is for, for this, as I said, it's only representative, but F2 is not, there is no complete for exactly for it. For all of them. Right, you don't have, like you said, in your language, three to one. You don't and we don't have that right. So it's okay. not complete in that sense. Yes. So uh, there is no complete result for this coefficient over here. Some diagrams are not. Yeah, the diagram you drew is not. Is not. not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. But the full oh, we agree. Mm -hmm. I no, I don't know. So you do not disagree. It was just The project to simplify your expressions to the level of our expressions is a separate project we have never underlined. I mean, you can probably put the rest of them on that. Yeah, so there are two calculations and do not disagree. <laughs> but uh, they do not agree, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. This is what is better to say. They do not disagree. Right. Okay. Uh, well, they're not known to disagree. They're not known. They're not known. <laughs> or to agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, well, I mean, we know that if Giovanni, Yuri, and uh, you know, Doug and Jan fail to compute the entire thing, then it must be complicated. Okay. Um, okay, so but uh, we want to actually study the two particle cor correlations, and this is why we need to consider a completely different object, so which is from, written here, it's double inclusive production. Okay, and well, we want to perform the same expansion. Okay, so uh, I'm performing this expansion over here. I, I have to keep it a little bit more, you know, so I, I, for, for example, I cannot uh, track all the momentum over here, so I will oversimplify this expansion over here. Okay. Uh, but uh, essentially, it will have the same uh, structure. So the first term will be uh, uh, the leading order in the uh, saturation momentum of the projectile, its force power, and then the first correction will be the sixth one. Okay. And again, what is uh, what we would like to compute is uh, uh, is this series. Okay. So the first uh, what is called uh, plasma graph is just a dilute dilute expansion when you also expand this first h one into the power series and you keep only the leading term. So it's written over here, and it was uh, uh, computed quite some time ago. Uh, then uh, one can uh, account for multiple rescattering in the, uh, in the target uh, uh, field uh, and extract the first contribution, H1. And it was known, and uh, the unfortunate thing of this uh, contribution that it is comple completely uh, invariant under uh, the uh, uh, symmetry when K is uh, substituted by its uh, uh, negative way. So, if you flip the sign of the momentum k, one of, one of them, uh, this uh, thing is completely invariant. As a vector. As a vector, yes, sure. So, yeah. And one of these uh, representative diagrams is uh, shown uh, over here. Okay? So, and this is why it precludes the uh, existence of any uh, odd harmonic. So, now uh, if you go to the next uh, order, H2, as you probably understand since we didn't know uh, F2 over here. So for H2, we do not also have a complete result. Okay? And it's difficult, it would be very difficult to compute the complete result. However, what I will show you that it is easy to extract um, the odd contribution to H2. The odd under uh, the reflection of the one of the momentum. Okay? Difficult to extract the entire thing, but not that hard to extract the odd part. Okay, so and why I'm interested in the odd part, so if I would ask what uh, B3 uh, probes, uh, if I just expand my two particle uh, double inclusive uh, production into the uh, uh, harmonics, so my B3 probes is actually this odd part. So uh, in order to have non trivial B3, uh, I have to break this invariance under the reflection of one of the momentum. Okay, so if they are not equal, they will be. A, uh, this uh, contribution, which is proportional. So this is why I'm interested in this quota is uh, what is it? What is two in terms of break? Uh, two party. So 
So this, uh, uh, these two in curly brackets, you can just keep it for, for here. I mean, it's not very interesting. But it's essentially, uh, it attributes this month to that you have a double inclusive collection. Okay, so if you would have, you can extract uh, the two in multiple ways. You can try to extract it, for example, measuring four pi, okay? And construct an appropriate operator which would extract this uh, harmonic, but then it will be via curly brackets for it. Okay, I'm not going uh, to discuss this uh, today at all. Okay, so experimentally, we see that, of course, there is non trivial uh, V2, uh, the just even uh, isomorphic isotropy in Pilet at high energies, so it's shown here. Uh, and we see that there is also a V3, and uh, the difference between them is not that large. Okay, so it is, uh, well, maybe it is a factor of three, uh, but uh, it is uh, the V3 is suppressed, but nevertheless is present. So, and the question what uh, uh, we wanted to uh, answer is uh, can the saturation dynamics uh, to account for this long range uh, correlation uh, and this old azimuthal isotopy V3 uh, going down, uh, beyond the dilute uh, dense approximation? So, and uh, uh, when this uh, problem was originally uh, discovered, uh, we uh, thought that maybe uh, there is uh, some non-trivial multiple rescattering process which would uh, uh, give us this uh, old azimuthal isotropy, but it will be he hidden here in this ellipsis at very, very high order corrections uh, to uh, the uh, multiple, multiple rescattering from the projectile side. Okay? And, and this is what, it, what is captured in uh, solving classical language equations on the line. So this was our original, uh, this was our original thought. Because we couldn't really uh, figure out any way of drawing a diagram which would uh, violate uh, the symmetry uh, with respect to the reflection of the one of moment. Okay, but theoretically it was unsatisfactory because uh, we, we still want to understand uh, things numer uh, analytically uh, to cross check our numerical result. I mean, this is the first, so it's probably not a good resolution. So we need to find this, uh, this contribution you know, analytically. And second, phenomenologically, this is problematic if we would attribute uh, the V3 to the high order correction on the projectile side, uh, because uh, the uh, V3 is not much different from V2, okay? So it's kind of phenomenologically also wouldn't, uh, wouldn't work very well. Okay, so, but uh, uh, I wish we would be driven by this inspiration in the very beginning of our, uh, of our discoveries uh, about the V3, uh, but, um, so the, we understood this in a different, uh, in, in this way, uh, quite uh, uh, later when we, we, we consider this problem. And this is inspiration from the simple transverse kidney symmetry and how it is uh, 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 originated in the kernel class at small x. <clears throat> so um, it is very, uh, it is very similar to the same, uh, to the same, uh, uh, to the same origin of this uh, odd Muslim anisotropy in single uh, transverse kidney symmetry. So, but uh, I, there, here, let me consider just a single gluon production, okay? It is given by, by the amplitude squared, which is just a Fourier transform of two amplitudes in the momentum space. So it's a Fourier transform of M times the it's a complex function. So in principle, this amplitude can have multiple contributions. But let's say it's because of the expansion in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, in the projectile uh, field. So it can have M1, M3, and so on. So for this asymmetry uh, to, 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 to take place under the reflection of the one of the momenta of the particle, in this case, it's just one particle, I have to have uh, the following property uh, between, this, uh, between this amplitude in, in X space. To satisfy this property, the only reasonable uh, uh, thing uh, is to require, uh, because the functions M1 and M3 are probably very different, is that M1 times M3 uh, complex conjugate is imaginary. Simple question. What is why color is different than what is one part of the three? One part of the three. One part of the three. Color yeah. has four. Just color to drive. Uh, left or right? Or? No, just to help you to, uh, to, uh, to, to guide you this argument. Color doesn't mean anything. It's not like uh, I am following your. No, 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 no. Just, just to distinguish for you that. Uh, okay. 
Okay, so what it means that M1 times, uh, so for, for what contribution we will be looking for is when M1 times M3 complex conjugate uh, is imaginary, so there is a phase difference between M1 and M3. Okay, so this is what we need uh, to have uh, in order to get uh, non trivial orbits in the front. Okay, so this is what we are looking for. And it hasn't been seen uh, at that point. Okay, so what would be the natural argument? The, nat uh, the natural uh, candidate would be like this. So we would have uh, two, uh, two sources of the color field in the amplitude. Uh, they will interact, uh, and we will have one in the complex conjugate. So this is essentially my M3, and this is essentially my M1. Okay, of course, if you average something like this, uh, simple computer production after performing uh, uh, averages with respect to the projectile uh, configuration, you'll get zero. Okay, so for, for a single uh, gluon production. But if you go to a double uh, gluon production, you can form uh, diagrams like this, and it is non zero. Uh, you can compute this diagram, uh, and there might be potentially a contribution which will be put under uh, reflection of the one of my quantum gluons or something like this. So this is the goal, uh, is, to, is to look at one of these diagrams. Okay, uh, originally when we attacked this problem with Larry, uh, we didn't uh, follow this uh, uh, path or didn't follow this logic. Uh, we just wanted to compute the first non-trivial uh, correction into the double inclusive production uh, by just iteratively solving classical Arduino's equation in the forward line. Okay, so essentially, uh, so this is just uh, with the broad strokes, so, uh, this is what the idea is we, we have uh, initial conditions of the light cone. Okay. These initial conditions we can expand with respect to uh, the uh, uh, strengths of the sources, uh, say on the projectile or proton here, and then iteratively solve uh, this uh, classical uh, Young Mills equations by considering uh, the sources uh, as, an, uh, as a perturbation. Okay, and after we uh, will uh, recover the, the dependence of the fields on time and on the momentum in the forward light cone, we will be able to uh, apply LSC and uh, 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 describe the particle production. So this is in, in broad strokes. Okay, so I mean it's pretty straightforward procedure. Maybe I will not go into the details here if you do not, uh, uh, if you are okay with that. So, because the details are, might uh, be a little bit more complicated, uh, and to, I might get stuck there for quite a while. So, but the, the, the basic idea is the same. So, that we have initial conditions, and we will expand uh, one of the uh, target uh, projectile field in the power series, in the, uh, in the sources, and then for us, uh, so uh, the classical means equations in the power plane. Okay, so, uh, and this is why I'm going to skip most of it. Okay, so this is the result. After you do this procedure, well-defined procedure, you'll get this result. Um, so there will be a leading order contribution, uh, which is uh, uh, linear, uh, which is quadratic in the uh, target uh, sources. Okay, quadratic in the target sources through the combination show here, omega. So this is the uh, uh, sources in the, uh, in, in the projectile, and this is target fields online. So in principle, it could be extracted from our result with Yuri, if we are in Sorry, I will get to this. Hmm? I will get to this. I will get so, to this. Bloody, I, I would love to see a little bit more of the detail. So, so there's two kinds of things. You start with the initial condition, uh, where, so is it, uh, are you including the nonlinear, so, and then you expand to next to leading order in the dilute row. So do you just expand the initial condition, or do you also take only to have nonlinear terms in the equation of both? Okay, uh, so a little bit, and I'll come back for, for, to, to this in, in, uh, for a little bit. So uh, I expanded the initial conditions, so that's the first part. Yeah. The second part, I need to, to, to uh, so in the initial conditions, there is a presence of this uh, a number, which is a photo of one in, yeah. the, in projectile yeah, so field. You have to gauge transform. I, I have to gauge transform to get rid of its technicality. And then I can expand, uh, and new field I will call beta. So this is essentially that what I want to do. I want to introduce beta, which is just gauge for your transform of my previous half. So at the leading quarter, uh, this is everything is linear in beta. Yeah. I get uh, basic functions as usual. And uh, here is where these omegas uh, pop out. Yeah. 
Okay, and the next leading order, uh, this is this ugliness, which includes uh, the nonlinear terms. Uh, now it's quadratic in beta one. So the right hand side you have nonlinearities in the leading order. Not quadratic terms in the leading order here. On the left hand side you have the perturbation. That's right. That's right. So in principle, uh, if you want to really uh, solve it for beta two, you have to solve this uh, equation. And it's ugliness, right? So it's, it's completely. It's just. It's just too much. It's possible. It's possible, but it's just. Just too much. Okay, it's, it's pretty discouraging. Uh, so uh, at the time we were uh, considering to give it up. But fortunately, if you want to compute particle production, you do not have to solve these equations. So why? Because of the property of the LSC. In LSC, what you want to compute is the uh, action, is this actual source. Yeah, so okay. uh, the equation of function is just a number square operating on the field, but the number square you're going to divide away in the LSC. Yeah, that's right. So what, what I need to do is just take the square of the right hand side of that equation. That's right. And this is what saved us essentially. I mean, still, I mean, these are uh, basic functions over here in time, and you have to integrate with respect to time in LAC over here. So there is a integration uh, still, but it can be done analytically. And by doing this, we actually discovered a, a few new uh, relations between basic functions and integrals. But uh, so it can be done analytically, and this is why. Uh, the solution is so uh, simple. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there will be a contribution. Oh, okay, so, so and this is the result. So this is the result for, um, for the even. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. okay. Uh, it's for, for the leading order, so given over here. And uh, so this is now uh, the contribution, which is uh, cubic in the uh, projectile uh, sources. Okay, so it has uh, three omegas over here. So it will be a, a raw cubic. And okay. you don't have any square roots here, I don't see. Square roots? I calculated, uh, well, uh, you remember, I calculated scattering of social graves in the next two years. And I have some square roots. Uh, to get the square roots, one has to integrate out the relationship to the moment of interaction. They are integrated out. Other uh, square roots of what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ugly, nasty things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a one of a square root of something. You usually don't get square roots, right? Well, it's 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 this is a perturbative expansion, power series expansion flow. What exactly is the power series expansion that gives you square roots? So you don't just expand, you want to calculate something, right? So you expand to a certain order in the road and you start doing some integral. This is what they just said. If you integrate over longitudinal momentum fraction. So there is a if you have two gluons merging into one, you have a longitudinal momentum. I think I should draw something. Uh, you know, if you if you have something like this, if I remember the origin, actually young nuclear. So so this is uh, one nuclear, this is another nuclear, each of them gives a gluon, the gluons and the whole shebang goes through the shockwave, merges. Let's say one of them yeah. You have um, Transfers momentum k curve of the guy you produce, let's say, uh, but there's also longitudinal momentum, and um, there is longitudinal momentum which flows this way, which is an internal variable which you have to integrate out. And when you carry out that integration, it just gives you something unpleasant. Let's say. So it gives but you something. Right, but in this case, if you're at the longitudinal momentum there, and it just Somehow you're just picking up the leading, leading high energy part of that gluon propagator. So some of the gluon propagator that that's there is just the one over t. Which and one of the, the is, which one which the one which has the arrow going. So the one so, attached to the source. Right. So there are two propagators going through the yeah. shock wave. So, so, yeah. so the so the ones the moment that there are they just I mean the, prop, the propagators are they just one over k plus or one over k minus? Uh, no. So the thing is that your so you have a longitudinal momentum fraction, say alpha on this line, one minus alpha on that line. Yeah. Right? And so if this after the shock wave, this line carries Q curve, it will also carry alpha because longitudinal momentum is conserved in the interaction with the shock wave. Here you will have K curve minus Q curve and one minus alpha. Right? So now you look at this thing, and as you know very well. Right? If this is sort of kind of already you can understand that this is like a splitting yeah. of one to two. Yeah, right? And yeah, you know if you take the light cone wave function, 
one to two light convey function when the when the k perp momentum gluon splits into q perp alpha and k perp minus q perp one minus alpha. Uh, the, this is proportional to uh, so, so let's say, so, so here. q minus alpha k squared. So, so, so right. So your alpha dependence is not trivial. Yeah. So right. so here. I think so. These the two vertex, uh, two, two horizontal lines are are somehow just two these lines or those lines? the horizontal, horizontal lines. Horizontal. lines. This is the like core lines. lines. Yeah, yes. this is the core line. So this is like the row. Yeah, yeah. this is like over here. So, yeah. So, so if, if, this if is like a row this. insertion in, in that so language. So here. that's I mean I mean what is so so I mean I mean what is language? I mean these these rows are just functions of the transverse coordinate. So somehow I think implicitly what is calculation you're assuming something about these alphas. Maybe you're assuming that the alpha is just one half or, or no, no, you integrate over alpha. But I don't think you are integrating. So, so but, 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 but let me say something. So uh, so let me say something. There is a square, you just cannot see it here. But there is a square, it's it's hidden over here. Oh that's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. I just I just write it in the in the uh, uh, right. In not obvious way, but this is the square. So the okay, square, the square of which I right? So I actually wrote it right. So the square root is like this. Uh, and don't ask me what k1 and k2 is. It's his k and l, probably. It's my k and q here. What is this? This is a square root of a cross product square. So the square root really is one of absolute value of k1 cross k2. And if you have a k1 cross k2 in the numerator as well, as you happen to have, then what's left is just a sign. So yeah, I think so. Here's so so there, there is this square root. Um, there are two terms which are uh, okay. So what do you when when you if you do this, it's the integration over tau mm -hmm. time that gives you this. Right? Yes, that's right. right. And that's so that and that corresponds to the integration. Yes, of yes. Tau. that's right. That's right. It, it comes out from the integration of the of the basic function with respect to tau. That's right. Uh, and if no, you no, that's, that's exactly our calculation what I'm describing, but the question was how to translate it into this language and where it comes from. But yeah, the sign I think is ultimately the same. Mm -hmm. sign. Mm -hmm. So so uh, there are two types of terms in your calculation. The one which comes with the sign, uh, if you would uh, uh, represent it this way, and the one which comes like with just this uh, this ratio without uh, anything upstairs to match it to the sign. Uh, but only uh, the ones with the sign contribute to this uh, to the both as uh, And I throw it away because it was so unpleasant that I decided I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're bad. <laughs> so, uh, uh, of course, uh, all of this is written in functional form. What I have to do to compute a uh, two particle correlation function, for example, is to take this, like this one guy here. Multiplied by the other one at the different momentum, and average with respect to the uh, projectile configurations and the target configurations. Okay, and then I will get ugliness. So when I uh, compute this ugliness, I, I offered uh, Larry to uh, edit into our paper. He said only in appendix. What? In appendix. Only what? In the appendix. Yeah. Because it was just too ugly. It just just way too. I didn't feel. I didn't. Uh, it, we couldn't. Make, Put it into even one uh, uh, page, and you understand why it's. And so this is a simple part of the calculation. Jan did in Germany and Doug and myself. Still, I remember the results. Long yeah. But you know, the parts we didn't calculate, they even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so the point is here that actually, if you if you look at this expression over here, it's pretty simple. So if you would uh, approach it from the numerical perspective, if you want to compute, so what you would do, you would you uh, on the lattice you can uh, easily formulate this Amelius. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, it has a derivative over here, but it's easy to formulate on the lattice. It's very straightforward. After this, you'll take this Amelia and you Fourier transform it once, and then once you Fourier transform it, you can substitute into this expression. It will immediately spit you out the result for the eta parameter. Which is known already, but uh, I'm just saying that it's very really easy to compute. Uh, and for the odd harmonics, you again, you'll just uh, for your transformer substitute over here, take one integral, and you're done. Of course, you have to average with respect to the project of the target configurations afterwards, but this averaging is uh, can be done and be routinely do it. Okay, so it is 
Uh, although, if you would proceed and write this expression as an integrals with respect to uh, impact parameters and the rest, uh, you will be missed if you have any hope with computing it. Uh, okay. So uh, now this was obtained at the spark finger gauge. So what uh, our motivation with theory was is to compute this in a global uh, A plus equal to zero gauge. Uh, and uh, this was uh, done in this paper. Uh, global, I mean uh, that uh, in the Fox finger gauge, I can only impose it into in the in the uh, forward light. Okay, so uh, and this gauge is imposed there. Um, okay, so uh, and then uh, we will just recycle uh, the results which was obtained by uh, uh, Giovanni, Doug, and Yuri in the paper where we where they attack this pre-saturation correction uh, calculations. And one of the uh, uh, so the, the amplitudes they computed, for example, this M one. Is just for single uh, gluon production, which we will need. And what we want to uh, track here uh, is uh, the uh, phases of the light cone wave functions. So in this case, we, uh, I want to track uh, this i over here. So M1 has an i over here, and then multiply some uh, combinations of the Gibson lines. Okay. So, but this i is important. So now, if I go uh, to the uh, uh, high order uh, amplitudes, for example, this one, uh, then uh, the expression is uh, very complicated. And here we go, this is, uh, this, uh, this, is this expression which it didn't even, uh, uh, I wasn't able even to squeeze it over here. Yeah, not enough. E even though I, as you can see, I used the entire width of the project. I went in the appendix too. Uh, no, it was uh, it was the main result of the paper. Oh, so, the master. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and here you can see there is a lot of uh, different contributions. But what I want to point out is again I want to, you to track these uh, factors of i. Okay, so there are two terms of so this term, this first term, and the second term, and one of them have a phase i, which wouldn't give me the uh, odd azimuthal uh, anisotropy. So it's the same as this m one. We don't want it, we want the contribution which would have a phase shape, okay? This one does it, it doesn't have an eye in front. So in this contribution, so only this contribution into this, uh, uh, into this ugliness computed from this diagram, only this contribution uh, multiplied by uh, the amplitude at the leading quarter will give us uh, the both as smooth on isotherpy and we can forget about this, uh, uh, about the rest. Uh, where, 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 I mean, I'm not sure what we did with this, right? This is. Uh, no, it was. And you and he are doing some lines, so what I missed. Sir? You so, and he. Oh, you and he are doing some lines, yes. You is a uh, journey. I journey is on the map. Okay. And can you show the guy drawing it? Well, this is just some of them. Yeah, and what log, log comes from what? Uh, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Don't, 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 not, not from this diagram, not from this diagram. So there are, th this is not, uh, I mean, so, so there are multiple diagrams which I like. Uh, uh, maybe some cell No, 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 case no, 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 I have the part of orbits, depending on who on, on, on this field. But it's a coordinate. But remember, you have a, some diagrams that he did not consider. I some. mean, OK. No, no, emitted. The part of orbits runs on K. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a, a, a coordinate space. OK, yeah, but this cutoff doesn't come from the board. The problem is that he was why using I don't 500 grams here. It's also in my space. And I don't understand why, why you're happy to have an expression with incorrect cutoff. I'm not okay. hearing, but it is what it is. But what, what, why, what, why, what, why, why can't it come from the Fourier transform? Oh, what should we do with it? I mean, you exchange a single T channel U on the coordinate space. That's a lot. 
Yeah. Uh, you want to get No, that's what gives you the power fall off in momentum space. You don't want to get rid of it. Right, right. No, 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 I don't. Just understand. Uh, you take the part of the structure okay. and put it transform, which is part of the part of the work. So the point is this: that we are yes, introduced to the ground final gate. Yeah. We might conclude there are some diagrams that uh, you did not consider because in the final the ground gate are absent. So, nevertheless, uh, there was no way to to make a one-to-one -one correspondence with your result because uh, uh, we should have taken the result to make which is from the result. But uh, well, what I call the product graph is gauge invariant, which multiplied by k mu, zero. So it does not depend on gauge. Yes. Uh, anyway, so uh, let me proceed because this term doesn't enter into my equation. <laughs> 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 You should ask Yuri. Yeah, yeah. It's Richter. Richter. Yeah, yeah. 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 Richter. So anyway, so I, I am going to get rid of this expression, and I will only keep this one. And actually, remember this sine function, which was uh, uh, there previously in my case. So this is this delta function, which will give you the sine function. Okay, so there is another set of diagrams, for example, like this. Uh, uh, and again, you can uh, uh, take them from the uh, paper by Giovanni, Yuri, and Doug. And again, it has the same structure. It has a term which doesn't have an I in it, so uh, it uh, is uh, phase shifted compared to the reason for the amplitude. And there is a term which has an I in it over here, and which is uh, I'm going to drop because it is not of my interest. Only this one contributes to the what is non isotropy. Okay, so there are a lot of diagrams like this which I can uh, construct from this uh, amplitude. I'll just uh, I'll show you uh, six different topologies. Uh, they are shown over here. And of course, uh, there are, it's not just all the diagrams, there are more, 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 much more. But the topological, uh, topologically, these are all of them uh, over here. OK? So why actually taking all these diagrams together uh, and uh, writing all everything down, we were able to reproduce the result of changing the Fox finger gauge. OK? Um, so, but you can understand uh, the complexity of this result by just looking at it. It will involve six uh, Wilson line multiplying some non trivial function momentum space which you have to compute. And this is why numerically it is uh, not that straightforward, it's just uh, uh, using this uh, functional uh, form which I showed you before. But nevertheless, uh, what we wanted to compute, we wanted to compute an actual number and see somehow the momentum dependence, at least uh, by doing some uh, maybe rough approximations. Uh, and, and this is what we did. So we, uh, we did the approximation, first of all, we considered large NC. Uh, second, um, we didn't succeed to uh, compute this in uh, a Hendrik Palan model. Instead, we applied the GBW model, okay, by neglecting this logarithm, the BMV mod logarithm. And uh, we only uh, considered the lowest non trivial contribution in the interaction with, this, uh, with, with the target, okay? So by doing all these assumptions, we can actually, uh, we were able to proceed and actually compute uh, the momentum dependence of this obvious move on isotropy, just in order to prove that it is non-zero. Because from this, uh, from this expression, this is not uh, particularly uh, apparent that this sum is non-zero, okay? So, uh, and this is the result uh, of this calculation. So these are different topologies, uh, and the corresponding uh, results are given by uh, these expressions. Uh, in these particular approximations, the diagram uh, D, E, and F do not contribute at all. So there is a contribution from the diagram A over here, there is a contribution from the diagram B uh, here, and there is finally a contribution from the C, uh, which has this delta function, uh, this HBT type uh, uh, correlations, uh, which proprietors from this diagram. But what's the color factor? Is this kind of an order on squared D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C kind of uh, thing? Uh, let me go back. So the color factor is easier to look uh, uh, to obtain from here. So this is FABC, which multiplies these uh, rotated uh, projectile sources. 
Yeah. Okay. You have to just square this uh, uh, thing together. Okay. So maybe put it another way. What would be the result be for SU two? That a non-zero result for SU two volt. Yes, you will get the non-zero result for SU two as well. Um, uh, again, looking at this uh, at this diagram over here, there's no yeah, B. There is no D. So yeah. So yeah. if it would if this would be D, then and by the way, so this F is uh, instrumental in obtaining this uh, autosimuth and isotropy. D is already has. Uh, okay, so uh, of, of course uh, there is no uh, problem of just taking this result and formulate it on the lattice and compute things numerically. And, and it was done. Uh, it, will, it will be presented next week uh, by Mark May, so I don't want just to uh, go into the details on that right now. Okay, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we can actually uh, qualitatively study uh, the different dependence of these different contributions to the odd and, uh, and even isomorph of anisotropy. Just qualitatively. So you remember that uh, uh, if we just count the number of the uh, projectile sources uh, to the odd azimuthal anisotropy, we will have that uh, it is proportional to the rho, to the number of projectile sources cubic. Okay, so this is uh, rho p to the cubic power. And it's because just it originates from these diagrams. Well, it will be eventually squared, okay, but this is nevertheless is of a higher order and then the contribution to the even part of the particle potential. Okay, so in principle, if I would believe that CGC is the only theory which describes the particle production in, for example, PA collisions, then the presence of all this immutable anisotropy uh, shows me a sign of uh, emerging coherence in the projectile uh, in the proton wave function. Okay, because it, it is essentially the first saturation correction in the projectile. So, and this non-zero non ratio are uh, all harmonics in high energy PA collisions, if I would believe that CGC is the only uh, theory of particle production, is the evidence of this situation. I mean, the thing is, I mean, this is again related to essentially alpha s right? But I mean, basically what one is doing is, I mean, what you're saying in this fact right, that essentially you have, can you produce, I mean, look at this diagram, right? You produce two gluons, right? And you say merging of two gluons is actually more important than anything that's being produced radiating something else, which will also be generated on top of this, right? And this is a main model. Nobody model doesn't have any extra radiation. So this is classical approximation. No, yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 I'm just saying you compute the alpha s version. You just compute the next one. Having additional emission would be a purely alpha s correction. Yes. This is an alpha s rho proton. Yeah, yeah that's fine. So, that's so if this power counting, that's different. Yes, yes, but I'm doubting that these effects are more important than actually that pure alpha s, which no, there's no I mean, which you know to be important. Sorry, right? the extra yeah, emissions are alpha s times the large low, right? So, of course, they would be important. There's a limit, and there, I mean, if there's a limit for that would be right. You can always find just like in everything else in CGC, there's a limit where and the approximation works, and then you build small x evolution on top of it if you go to small graphs. The same story, you have to start somewhere. So you start with the MV model. Now, we cannot solve the full MV no, model, right, for two large nuclei, so we take one. To this no, no, but this is not what I, I mean. What you're saying is that monojet production is dominant over dijet production. That's what you're saying. That's, that's the so same thing. So so yeah, 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 okay. That's it. Right? Still yeah. Okay, so anyway, so as I said, it's a long range. Okay, it's long range and it's classical approximation. Um, sure, if you go to very large PT, of course, your digest production is done. We're talking about, again, there's no assumption of a very large PT. Just particle production as it is done in the MV model. Just doing two particle production. But I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, somehow, it's not a it's very, very hard to get something like zero. zero. This, is, this is somehow just power coming in how to grow project. Yeah, it's just the MV model. Yeah. Counts in producing two. Yeah, but all I'm saying is that, I mean, that this alpha, I mean, look, you have a power series in alpha s and you have a power series in alpha s rho, right? This is the two powers here, right? So you yeah. cannot say that, I mean, the, the alpha s, the, the next term in the alpha s rho power series is the only thing that can produce the ultra mod. It can also be the next term in the alpha s. Well, it does this order in alpha s rho. Right? But one is more. <laughs> so some of the power, 
the power company is the power company is alpha is is very very small. I'm not sure, <laughs> but alpha is rho is small, but not as small as alpha. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's 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 I agree. Sorry, I do not disagree. This is why he's saying he's not saying that he's making it. He's not saying calling this an alpha S expansion, he's calling this an expansion. No, 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 I, I agree with that. I'm just saying that for spectral resolvers, yeah, I think it would actually probably be more important to look at the alpha S connection. Well, the, 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 you're welcome, welcome to, to do that, but the problem was to find anything which was yeah, not zero, right? No, <laughs> it's not. It's, 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 yes, but, but, sorry, sorry, yeah. I, I was intentionally provoked. Yeah, yeah, this is fine, but I feel like you know there's a lot of effort being invested in this also as raw correction, which may be actually much less important than the RPS correction. This is why I'm raising sure. this uh, point. And, we, and we attempted to take this correction uh, by uh, like mimicking the uh, uh, hadronic wave function, like like Jim Bokman's wave hadronic wave function with, uh, with Alex Homer. And there are some corrections which also work. Okay. So, but anyway, so uh, let me just take this result. Okay, let me take this result and write uh, what would be, uh, for example. Um, the multiplicity dependence of, uh, of these harmonics, okay? And I have even and odd harmonics, okay? Even and odd harmonics. So these factors Q over here, which I'm averaging, uh, so this is my uh, interesting co-operator, uh, it, it depends, so it's Q squared, it depends on, uh, or even harmonics still depends on even, uh, dn, dy, d, d to k, and for odd, it will depend on this odd contribution, which I showed you before over here. So one depends on even, another depends on odd. But the normalization is always even because if you integrate the uh, odd part with respect to the momentum, you get zero. Okay, so normalization in what is uh, numerically they call cumulus is always even. So this is what uh, this normalization appears to be. Uh, and the uh, the actual uh, interesting driven part uh, is either even or odd. Okay, so now let me assume that the high multiplicity uh, fluctuations, for example, in PA collisions or uh, A collisions, is driven by fluctuations of the uh, projectile rot. Okay, it's a, it's a well defined assumption if you have very well developed target, which is smooth and set. Okay, so the fluctuate, multiplicity fluctuations is driven by fluctuations in the, um, in the projectile. Okay, so then I just let's uh, uh, analyze it, analyze this dependence on the raw projectile. Let's rescale every raw projectile by some factor of c. So it's momentum independent factor. I'm not going to uh, make uh, do a good job um, uh, in terms of momentum dependence, and this is why I want to only discuss the momentum integrated quantities. For example, the multiplicity in this case, uh, d and dy, will just receive a common factor of c squared if I do this rescale. Okay. The even harmonics would not change because uh, each of these guys uh, will receive a contribution c square and here's c square and they just exactly this. And this order in the uh, in the expansion uh, in the dense expansion. Okay. Now, if you go uh, to the odd uh, harmonics, uh, then in this case, since we're dividing something which depends uh, cubically as as a cubic power on 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 rho which divided by the quadratic power in rho, and then we square it to get this result, uh, we will get c square again in front. Okay, so uh, they scale pretty differently, and therefore, uh, just by uh, getting rid of this factor c, I will get the multiplicity dependence uh, as written here, that uh, the even harmonics are independent of multiplicity in this order of expansion, to this order of expansion of the density approximation, uh, while uh, odd harmonics uh, depends on the square root of the multiplicity. Okay, this is I can just qualitatively extract uh, uh, from uh, uh, from looking at these equations. Okay, I can in principle compute it, but uh, the qualitative uh, uh, structure is apparent over here. Okay, now I can compare this uh, to what uh, was measured uh, um, at uh, at Atlas. So at Atlas, so. Uh, they show, uh, for example, for um, integrated quantities, this is uh, the second harmonic, this is the fourth, and this is the third. And I just uh, took a linear function and I uh, fixed the coefficient and then charge even uh, equal to 200. And after this, so I just draw a, a straight line. And I, again, I, 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 I fit the coefficient at the one, one point over here uh, for, uh, for V3, and I just draw a square root uh, through this point. 
So in principle, uh, qualitatively, this describes uh, the data pretty well. Okay. Question? No? I'll, I'll complain later. Okay. So uh, of course, this is all to, uh, to as I said, to leading order um, in the projectile um, in the projectile density. Uh, probably the high multiplicity events. In the high multiplicity events, you have to take into account uh, high order contributions in the uh, in the projectile density, and this scaling will break down. Okay. But this has to be explored, and uh, I, I cannot do it at least analytically, only because I cannot go uh, to higher. Uh, uh, Expansion coefficients in this uh, dense approximation. Okay, so uh, the conclusion is here is that there is auto uh, uh, harmonics and the inherent uh, property of the particle production and saturation framework. So they are present there. So we, we, we found and identified the diagrams which, co which contribute to this auto isotropy. It's long range, okay, uh, in, in rapidity. So if you just uh, think that there is only CGC uh, contribution, like you know, classical and you know, long range uh, in rapidity, then it might be a, a surface and evidence of saturation. So in principle, uh, one can uh, just take this uh, framework and apply it um, quantitatively uh, to the data for PA and uh, deuteron A collisions at, say, LHC and 3, and uh, Mark makes uh, Mark makes and next week I will we'll talk about this, but I just show you one of the uh, uh, qualitative predictions uh, from this framework uh, for multiplicity dependence in PA at LHC. Okay, so this is uh, my first part about the P3, so let me know if you want to continue to the next. Oh, this next part. But oh, we can we can do it uh, how many more slides? Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> How many? About 20. Uh, maybe, well, if, if the audience wants, we can start the afternoon discussion with Buggy's 20 slides. And we can break for lunch and then uh, put the people in the room. Or you want to endure another hour? I'm not quite sure we have the room. We may have the room. 12, 12, 12 30 on Friday. I think it goes. I think it goes. So we have a sort you can check with Cheryl if you want to see for sure. Okay. If, in the meantime, people are welcome to ask questions about the first part. So, uh, so, so okay. I, so, so I, I mean, I basically want to raise again the same objection. Right? So, I mean, okay. So you're expanding in powers of the density projector. So if, if, if you were to think that there's any place that this is good, then this is in low multiplicity, right? Why oh, why? 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 Right, because, because, I mean, the multiplicity is proportional to the scale of the scale. Of the scale, of the scale. So, right? say, say it louder, I can hear that. Right, because the multiplicity is dominated by essentially the density of the charges in the proton. I mean, everything that's in the proton scatters of the nucleus and produces stuff. Right? So, so why, is this, why is this low multiplicity? No, I'm saying that. Okay, I mean, if you go to high multiplicity, you may have you may have larger larger densities in the project, right? right? So if there's any, I mean, the place where expensive bits will be expansion better is a low one. Yeah, but there's really right? fluctuations of growth. Hmm? Yeah, no, 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 that is perfectly fine. Right? I just want to establish that if this is in principle where you expect the framework to work, at, right? Okay, now you go and you look at actually the correlations that you measure. No matter. I don't. I still don't understand. Why are you saying it works well in low multiplicity and rock that's more? Ah, because the density in the proton is still um, the density is small. The theory works best when there are no interactions. Yeah, a few. <laughs> I mean, but to get to this point, uh, I have to assume that I dominated by the classical flips, right, as well. So. The idea is that you could do for all particles, the proton or whatever, but this is just an approximation. But the idea is not that you have to necessarily flip. Right. This, this is fine, right? What I want to say is. The, 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 the leading order, you are still a leading order. The more particle you are getting, you are still a leading order because you still, it's less expensive to produce an extra more from another nucleus. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure, or sure, sure. Then, no, no, I mean, I understand the power. Right? All I'm saying is if you actually Do go we to. It? Yes, we have it until 2 30, actually. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, so, so what I want to say is actually, if you go to, I mean, so say you really go to normal. 
you don't see any of what you're describing. What you see is the is the, so is, is the back to back correlation. I don't understand. Well, wait, one second, one second. So, back so you, you just look at you just look at the asteroid diagram of what you do. Yeah, you, I mean you just look. At it. So you go you go. I mean, can you just draw your bridge? Right? What I'm saying is you look at this bridge. Right? You look at the bridge. So you look at what about dihedral correlations, and that is a function of the. Of the so now you're referring right? to what what happens in the experimental thing, or in this calculation. No, I'm, I, I'm trying to direct, you know, when, I mean, what are the effects we see in experiment? We're trying to describe motivating these calculations, right? And I'm saying that these effects may not be what we got. Right? One second, one second. So in this data, digests come, uh, are subtract. Yes. Yeah, but okay, I mean, what I'm saying is that when the exponential should work the best, we don't have the leading effect. That's essentially what I'm saying. So you look at the function of delta pi, you have zero, right? And in the long range part, you just throw the bridge. Oh, the bridge? Yeah, just the bridge, right? Yeah, this thing, right? So this is high multiplicity, right? So now you plot this in low multiplicity. Okay, sorry, sorry, there's sorry, nothing sorry, here. Sorry, sorry. I don't buy your argument that it's good best at low multiplicity. It's best at typical multiplicities or higher. Low multiplicities are very special. They may have nothing to do with color glass or anything like that for saturation. Yeah, but the, okay, okay, but okay. And maybe peripheral collisions. Okay, I, I mean, I take that point too, right? But I guess, I mean, basically, the, 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 the real way that this correlation function is involved, right? Is that, okay, we have, we have essentially a back to back peak, right? And this is, I mean, this is roughly something, right? Right? Then, okay, what we see in this, what we see in this, in this, in this more central collision is that there's something on top here, right? And other than whatever happens here, right? But we should, I mean, we should somehow also try to put this. Dominant feature at least in the low It's not. It's not a part. And of I know it's not part of your calculation, but I think it's been investing a lot of effort on, on trying to. I don't know. You know, put it here, little bumps or something like this. But we got to this part of the dominant feature. But the same, right? but the same so time, time back to back, back, but the same time, back back they back also invested some time with this template we to subtract this digest contribution. Right? Yeah, so, I know. So they work for us, is, to, so that you can. But this is yeah. look. I mean, this is something. Yeah, it's your reset, right? If this is something any much should be like you run that piece here, right? And you get back to back correlations. So what, why should we want to make that? I mean, is there something not in this picture? No, I really don't know. Well, I mean, well, well, I, mean look, I mean, there can be in field. I mean, if you say this is your diagram, there can be interference or something like this with our two source production all these moments. I mean. The, 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 issue, the issue was that if you look I mean, at maybe the thing all the dice and that okay. I mean you could use two demons out of out of a digit pair, and in the other case you could use two demons out of two sources, right? So, so, so right, so, so much. Uh, this this is, I think this yeah, I think so this is zero right. like well that's structure right. Right. okay. So I guess so I guess so other things like this. So right. what? No. Zurin somehow they did, right? So in some sense, what Buddy is doing is that he's saying that there's this non-zero experimental signal. Yes. And he's, he's actually presenting the first calculation that gives a non-zero signal in theory, right? Whereas what you're talking about is that there's a, there's a signal in the experiment, and there's a, there's a result in theory. And what you're saying is that you should get, the, get both of these to, for the B2s to match exactly before you start even thinking about uh, B3. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is that I mean, what I'm saying is that okay, you just you just go look at the experiment, you look at the regime where you think you should understand things, and right, they clearly the whatever the alpha. I mean, the higher order alpha s correction is much more important than the alpha s higher order alpha s book. So all I'm starting, all I'm trying to say is why, why, should, why are they more important? Why because because it's a physical limit that the R is alpha s larger than alpha s rho. Only in the limit where rho is big small. That's not the limit we are considering. That's not the separation limit. That's not so if you're talking about alpha s local, well, okay, we can consider this sorry. limit, but this may not. I mean, no, no, no. no, no. no, no. If we just look at what the data tells us, right? I mean, if we want to describe data, data tells us many things, but the theory is we should put consistent power count, right? So if your rho is large, first you resign powers of alpha rho, and then you evolve it by resigning powers of alpha log one over x. This is a standard separation okay, description. Step one. There is some powers of alpha rho, this is the MD mode. Step two, there is some alpha log one over x corrections, this is a small x evolution. Uh, each of those things are important in their own regimes. Right? If your x is very small, of course alpha log one over x will be very important. If your x is small but not terribly small, and your system is already dense because you're colliding large nuclei, 
then alpha row corrections are important, and you have to resolve them. Each of those has its own corner of a space where, where they are dominant. Right? And uh, you start in separation calculations. It's always easier to start, well, not easier, but it's more natural to start with a quasi classical MV picture where you try to see if you don't get back. And our statement, minus and line, and actually line and large, it's just in that classical picture you already have on our models. Now, if you want to address it by small X evolution, very no, I don't want to address it by small X evolution. I just want to address it and talk about it in the discussion a little bit. That's, that's actually a valid question. No, but what, what? I mean, what else can you do? Right? This is our power count, so this is the rules of the game. Are you trying to just change them all together? Well, what do you suggest? Right? These are the small X rules of the game. Any model, uh, small no, okay. I mean, where, I mean, where do you okay? I mean, where can you? I mean, at what point? At some point in your expansion, you must be able out of a single source in your projector to produce two powers. Right. Yeah, so, right. That's so that's the solution. solution. Yeah. And that's, I'll, I'll talk about it in, in a, I'll, I'll, I'll and measure about both of them. Right. Right. So, so you measure so, both. So yes, right. of course you, you have, have to. Hold it yeah, it's not evolution. Well, if, 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 if you're really, if you're really, if you really, if you really have to work out the leading order first before you put higher. Uh, yeah, but what I'm seeing, what I'm, all I'm saying is that what you see in the data by just looking at it is a lot of the higher order. So, okay, if so you actually you want to make serious statements about the data, I think well, you should be aware of it. If this is you want to be serious, way all I'm saying. Deal, you start with the leading order, then you go to the next leading order. Not starting with the next leading order and then before doing the leading order. Hello, before you get to the next leading order, you are saying there are a lot of more drivers that are still at leading levels. Then when we are able to complete the full theory, which we don't know whether we will be able to, then you start to add on top of that next leading order correction. That is fine. So in other words, if I do a next leading order correction to the calculation I did uh, with, with you, it would be a waste of time because there are other diagrams which contribute equally important, which are more important, more leading. Uh, which are because are against by R, uh, by A to the one third. So I, one I, think, I think that's not what he's saying. I think what he's saying is that, for instance, if we want to have two or three nucleons in the projectile, they have to be somehow dynamically generated. Just think of them not as nucleons, but as no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. saying. No, that's not what you're saying. Then I no, I mean what no, I'm no, saying no. is. <laughs> Well, I'm trying mean, to help you out, but <laughs> no, I mean what I'm trying to say. So I mean I don't know how you get power. But okay, so I mean we have we have two ways to produce two particles in CGC, right? So either we start with two sources and they independently produce by inter, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, good one. This goes with alpha S no scale, right? Pro projector. Pro yeah. projector scale, right? Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Good. That's what you know, Doug and I and Alex. And yes. Said. Okay, then you can do this, right? It's supposed to be alpha. Can, can, you, alpha can, S. can you please draw it but this is the same way as the diagram? Okay, right? so you start with one. You, you'll start yes, yeah, so you, you start, start with, with one, one source. Okay. You emit, yes. you measure, right? And okay. Then you emit another one. You emit another one. That one so you measure too, so that's not part of the position, but that's measure. Right. So right. So okay, the, and then the whole, I mean the whole thing is get us well. Sorry, that, so, so that's yeah. that's also the alpha s rho square, right? No, it's alpha oh, s no, times no, alpha no, s rho. Yes. Okay, right. so it's a how it's a square. No, it's square. We have the square. No, and this is what exactly what I'm saying. Now you look and you look at what do you actually see when you measure correlation. This guy gives you a bank to bank correlation. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the sources are the upper straight line. Of course, it gives you left one. It gives you upper the line. It's not from one. It gives you negative. It actually gives you negative. It actually gives you negative. It's it's much more zero than one time. Oh, yeah. Even it's not even harmonic. 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 So my, my statement is now I spin through the data starting say from low matrices and events and I kind of start to look at the section. Okay? And I just look at the correlation function as a function of A. Right? What, what I actually just read of, from what's happening is good. What I see in peripheral, in, in peripheral, let's say minimum bias PA or something, 
is I see essentially oh, yeah. a peak around pi and nothing near stuff. Okay, so I really see this kind. Yeah, because yeah. you don't have a high density proton, it's a low, low projectile. So if your raw projectile is small, this two Yes, but I mean, we're talking about it and, and, all the and at high Pt, of course, the second diagram wins. So if you actually carefully, I think. But this is not high Pt. Say one, two, three, 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 something more. Because it's high energy. Okay, I mean, that's the only thing when it's three. Yeah, we're all talking. I mean, let me just finish the sentence, right? I mean, I just want to raise awareness for the fact here, right, that we, what we're actually talking about, what we actually see in our model physics, it looks like kind of smallish modulations on top of this, on top of this back and to back. This is why this template fit uh, procedure was involved to subtract. Yeah, but this template fit procedure is nonsense. You cannot tell me that there's no interference <laughs> between well, this guy and this guy. Well, well, I mean, that's 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 yeah, yeah, good, then just add one more source here. Okay, okay. So, okay. So, basically, so basically, so basically, sorry. In fact, Zurin's comment doesn't really concern what that is. I'm, I'm not. Zurin, Zurin's comment is about that Atlas is complete, is that the Atlas result is completely wrong. Uh, it, it, no, yeah. I mean, what I want to say is, what, I mean, Some if we want to describe PA, if we want to describe correlations in PA conditions, I mean, we have to care about this, this, this imagine like correlation. If this is our goal, right? We just take, you know, describe particles yeah, that have a correlation. correction. So yeah. They're even harmonic. So basically, sorry, but basically, sorry, what you're saying is that Atlas is not, not, not subtracting the back to back correlation. So you, what you're saying is that Atlas is just measuring digets and not uh, and not V three, not the model. Right. But I mean, if 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 the stuff based on this physics can put the curve through all these V twos and V threes, is this the signature that it varies? Guys, explain to me. I thought this statement was when you calculated the lowest order, okay, you could prove that P3 was zero. Uh, lowest, lowest order, order, order. Lowest order you do, 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 do your dipole scattering, okay? And, and if you calculate things to lowest order, it was zero. No, so the statement is like this you have raw projectile and raw target. So you expand an alpha row projectile and alpha row target. And this is what Vladi had in terms of QS squared as well, but let me, uh, what? Well, let me just, so you have D sigma, you know, D2, K1, DY1, D2, K2, DY2. And this is, um, you start expanding. Uh, for the Dugland production, expansion starts with the projectile density squared and some function of alpha s rho target right. to all orders. Um, and at the, this is a leading order contribution to the uh, tubulon production. And this is completely uh, uh, even harmonic yeah, zone. So right. even right. only. That's right. And that's, that's what you mean. And what, what you and Vladi right. and then Vladi and I have calculated is uh, not the full contribution, but uh, part of the alpha s rho projectile cube term with what was our notation? This was F1, and this was F2. Right. We calculated part of this F2, well, part of this term, you, you, so, you, uh, uh, which gives odd harmonics. So, all this is, this is a, so what Soren wants to find is an S squared. Alpha squared. Alpha so, what I'm saying is, I think that each of these F1s is also uh, function. Uh, ah, you wrote F1 for S or what? So, okay. 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 I mean, these, these are, but these have their own alpha S correlations also. Right. right, so, you want right. To so, so this is, this is also a series in alpha x, right? So what I'm saying is so, there's a okay. Fermi plus so, alpha so x. In, a, in a theoretical right. regime where alpha s rho t is larger or greater or of the order of one, and alpha s rho p is sort of like barely smaller than one, but you want to go you like your the order. Order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a in a in a in a in a deep saturation regime, of course. What alpha rho projectiles? So this is what I'm trying to say. What you're saying, Dennis, is, is that rho target could be a water one over alpha, and then we have this two all others. But projectile is kind of it's not the extreme dilute case. It's not the first term. It's the next term. Now the next term, of course, has the even part, which is uh, not calculated, but again. Vladi and Larry and Vladi and me managed to extract this part. 
And so in the saying, screw this whole picture, let's just resum all the alpha S corrections to it, and they are more important because data tells him so. Well, I, no, no, I'm not saying screw it is a no calculation. No, I'm just saying, no, what I'm saying is that, they, I mean, there is a very important correction which comes from alpha S, just pure alpha S, right? well, and we should also look at this, right? because I think we're, we're focusing so very so much so on this alpha S so role so when data so tells us up. You need to find something which is from zero. Have you got something which is from zero? Yeah, he would say, tell you that if you take the neutral jet configuration, which only has back to back correlations, but no near side correlations, it has all of them. Uh, and the I think signs, that's true. The signs, the signs no, are wrong. The signs are wrong? The yeah. signs are, yeah, you, you, you have negative DC, right? Square. Negative, negative DC square. 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 So, and that's what the data is coming from? No. No, of course not. No, so, but so I mean, it. it I mean, look, if you fully transform this thing or not, I don't care, but I mean, this is what the thing is. Right? And we should at least also make a statement about this thing. Right? That's the dominant feature of the correlation. Right? So so when you fully transform it or not, no, I don't care. I thought it's more symmetric than that. Hmm? No, I mean, it's, it, it, you really have to go to very, well, very, very subtract. That's what Claudia yeah. is saying. Yeah. After you subtract the trace of Claudia, right? So that's I mean, that it's a standard trace. I mean, oh, compare, right. compare, compare here, right? So after, I mean, this is very high multiplicity P in that. Already a lot, right? Yeah, but this, this is before the subtraction. Okay. Yeah, but this, I mean, so what, what we're doing, I mean, look, what I do is the experimentalists quote a value for V3 that they measure, and that V3 is after they claim to subtract the back to back check, the back to back part, right? And so so they, the experimentalists have a result, and we're trying to calculate that result that this is they subtracted to the best of their ability, yeah, right? They do not know about these so experiences. So if you're saying that Atlas did the subtraction wrong, fine. I no, 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 I, I, no, 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 so I think the thing is, this is the uh, uh, experiment for the inspiration power. <laughs> what you're talking about, right? There are also twists, as we discussed also all this week, right? So at large PT, uh, of course, higher powers of rho translate into higher twists. And the diagram you draw, more or less, with some now maybe if I raise all those extra green ones, would be leading to this. Yes, yes, right? yes. So yes. if you're yeah, looking yeah. at fairly high PT, and don't ask me what high means, certainly above three G, <laughs> uh, uh, then of course your contribution becomes very important, and at very high PT it will dominate yeah, but any correlation, right? Because it's a leading to this contribution. And what we're talking about are a higher place. Yeah, but so no one. No but my concern is that your IPT may not be all that high. But, 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 but you're, you're again, it's a science. I thought people looked at these kinds of things and they always got wrong science. No, no, no. So he's not, you see what he's saying? He's not saying that V3, I, I guess, is dominated by the back to back correlation. So what he's saying is, guys, this is all very interesting, but if this was really a dominant contribution, the correlation function would look fairly symmetric around, so the peak around zero would be comparable to the peak around pi. And, and he's saying, look at the data, the peak around pi is so much larger, and experimentalists subtract it out, experimentalists rec recognize it as a back yeah. jet, which they see in PT or peripheral collisions, so they subtract it out. So he, I guess he's saying, well, they subtract it out, but it's such a large effect, where does it come from? It comes from this leading twist, you know, standard PQCT diagrams, why don't we, but we don't include them because in this power counting, they just no. But we should. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't think we can actually. I mean, since so, it's such so a large effect, we should also be very critical and skeptical no, of subtracting it we, out we, and not. Right? I, I mean, we should, 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 should include it. We should be including it. We should be including it in our calculation when we're comparing our calculation to our experimental results, where the experimentalists have subtracted it out. So they, whether or not they have subtracted it out correctly, and whether or not you can reproduce the, the unsubtracted one, is it's a different calculation. It's a different question. I guess he's worried about interference between those terms and uh, yeah, for terms instance, here. But I'm not sure. So, so again, the, the diagrams I was pestering you during your talk, those diagrams do in the large PT case. I mean, in the linearized case, it's just a single BFKL ladder yeah. with two gluons per piece. Yes. And if you take those, and as we already discussed earlier, yeah. this, like if you take one of those gluons. PT, or if you take back to back limit, right, it would map onto double log T block and onto this collinear condition. Yeah. So that piece is there. Um, these are not quite the rule of the game. So don't, that calculation assumes a really dilute projectile, right? It was really like other 
the first power of raw projectiles yeah. were. Uh, but then it included a lot of small acts of evolution. So it's already, a, it, it, it exists in saturation, but it comes in through the alpha one one over x corrections to the existing picture. Um, so he may have a point if in his calculation, you know, he enhances that second diagram with a log. Yeah, then yeah. it could be valid what, what he says in that case. Okay. Right, so in that, in that, this is one row, but he has an extra log. Right. The point is if you can calculate or not. I mean, in other words, here we kind of have some God given raw projector, right? But you can try to generate it dynamically, and that's what I try to say here, right? So you can, you can start with maybe a single core projector and try to generate many sources for small X evolution, and then you do this type of calculation, and at the same time, maybe that one. Yeah, who knows? So I, I, don't know. I mean, I think you're saying it's we, we have to include small X evolution, not just between the producers and the, uh, and the target, but also on the other side. Well, maybe that will partially at least take care of the concerns. Yeah, I think we're roughly heading in the same direction. No, I mean, I mean, my point is just there's this huge back to back peak, right? It's, which is true, right? And experimentalists subtract this out. But, it, but it's, 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 it's a big effect, and it's, it's not clear that you can subtract it all with it. With no. infinite precision. Yeah, so we should actually have a lot of the spectrum. They might be in the range of experimental science because they can't respect. Yeah, but that's not no, the calculation presented by Blaise. It's not just a big thought. Oh, he's not pushing the big thought. 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 Yeah, yeah. Now that he has done this, I would like to see it. Fine, fine. So I'll ask you to do that. I'll sit down. It's a different, it's a different experimental measurement. It's a different calculation. Okay, I think we need to thank Soren for resolving the issue of what we do with the rest of the talk. Oh, by, by the way, so <laughs> it's not on the issue of CGC, all right? So it's also in hydrodynamics. They do the same, right? So they don't have this back to back Hydrodynamics doesn't describe that. Well, this is something <laughs> <laughs> no, this is such a complicated. This is such a complicated. No, that's yeah. I mean, what is your okay? Okay, I mean, if you want to fit, what is your error? Well, one second, it's not a fit. As I said, it's qualitative. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so I, I just fix the coefficient. I mean, like for one point, and I drew the curve. Okay, I mean, it's really, really. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. It's not a calculation. <laughs> I mean, but uh, let's say if I would show you this curve without saying anything beyond beyond behind this, would you say it is suggestive? I would say it's too good. Yeah, I would say the same. <laughs> I, I would say the same. It's too good. It's too good. All right. A miss cheerful not. So let's start <laughs> again. So we can be like two thirty in the discussion room and we'll decide what to do. Maybe we'll come out afterwards. <laughs> or maybe sorry and we'll leave the discussion. He seems very argumentative. <laughs> I don't think he's the only one. Oh no, that's uh... <laughs>